Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's July 15th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, as the undercover Planned Parenthood video goes viral, the Washington Post changes their headline from organ harvesting to research. Then... Newly released video shows the Gardena police brutally shooting down an unarmed man. Plus, a gay man is suing publishers of the Bible over scripture that says homosexuality is a sin. Yeah, good luck with that. All that plus much more coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Yesterday, I had the unfortunate displeasure of bringing you a story about Planned Parenthood. One of their top executives was out to a very casual dinner, and she was speaking about chopping up babies as if she was some type of farmer talking about harvesting chickens or ducks or pigs or something of that nature. Truly horrific. And if you have the stomach for it, I do encourage you to go and watch it. It's on Infowars.com under several articles, including this one. Washington Post changed Planned Parenthood organ harvesting headline to research. And we have an image that will show you here, proof positive that the Washington Post originally used the words organ harvesting and then changed it to research. The story itself was also edited, with body parts like heart and liver being changed to tissue. Yet no note was made of any changes by the publication. The timing of the Washington Post headline change coincided with Planned Parenthood releasing its own spin on the footage, claiming it was heavily edited and calling for journalistic balance. So, okay, let, let's talk about this heavily edited aspect of it. So if you're out having dinner with somebody, let's say you're out for an hour or so, and you cut that down to about 10 or so minutes, that's how long the video was. Yeah, you're going to have to do some, I guess, quote, heavy editing. But you can clearly see that the context of the conversation was not changed. He says, you know, how do I go about getting uh, hearts and livers? And she says, livers are the big sellers or, you know, uh, how much does it cost? It costs X number of dollars. Those things were not out of context. They may have been a shorter part of a much longer conversation, okay, but they were not taken out of context. And it's truly disgusting and just it goes to show you the type of activities these people are up to. And we have another article from CBS, covert video targets Planned Parenthood fetal parts policy. And in this one, CBS admits that commercial sale of human fetal tissue is illegal under federal law. But non-commercial tissue donation is allowed if the woman undergoing an abortion gives her consent. So basically they're saying here that if you go to Planned Parenthood and you consent to uh, giving them your child, giving them your fetus, they can do, you know, I guess what they want to do with it. And I've never gone through this procedure, so I can only speculate, but I'm wondering if it's something like they give you some, you know, 15 page, sign here, sign here, sign here. And one of those pages is giving them the permission to take your baby up, chop it up and sell it to the highest bidder. Once again, that's only speculation. But then they had a statement from a spokesperson, Eric Ferrara, and he said, at several of our health centers, we help patients who want to donate tissue for scientific research. So uh, I can only speculate, but it seems very odd and bizarre to me that they would kill people in such a fashion. And speaking of an odd and bizarre killing, we have this, Gardena police shooting video, justified or cold-blooded killing. So this video came out, and I'll let you judge for yourself whether these actions were justified or not by the police officers. Now let's switch gears now and talk about the First Amendment. You have your freedom of speech, your freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, so on, and also your freedom of religion. Now, if I have my First Amendment and I'm all happy, then I shouldn't try to be taking your First Amendment away from you or vice versa, right? So we're going to talk about this next story from a purely First Amendment standpoint. It doesn't matter what you believe one way or the other about religion, about Bible, or whatever else. Let's just talk about this clearly cut and dry First Amendment. We have an article, Gay Man Sues Bible Publishers Over Homosexuality is a Sin Versus in the Bible. A gay man has filed a $70 million lawsuit against two Bible publishers claiming their translations of the Bible calling homosexuality a sin caused him emotional distress. And this is Liberty Voice reporting, the older King James Version from which his family pastor preaches has caused him to be cast away by his family for its use of the word homosexual. And Zadavan spokesman, uh, Tara Powers, that's the Bible publisher, came out and said, Zadavan does not translate the Bible or own the copyright for any of the translations we publish, she said in part. And to go on beyond this, they also have what is called, uh, referred to as the Queen James Bible, which basically 
takes out, um, I don't know if you want to say derogatory, but it takes out things talking about homosexuality in a negative light. I guess that's the best way that I could put it. And like it or not, homosexuality is deemed to be a sin in the Bible, as are many other things, including but not limited to fornication and adultery. So it's not just homosexuality that is pointed out in the Bible. But to anybody who would say, well, where in the Bible does it say homosexuality is a sin? I have a very short list in here. And another article that we also put on InfoWars the other day, we have a few Bible verses for you so you can see these verses for yourself. We'll go to Leviticus 18.22, King James Bible. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13, Romans 1.26, Romans 1.27. And these are things you can research on your own time. But once again, regardless if you believe in these things or not, you can't go and sue a Bible publisher saying, I don't like your version of the Bible when you have the Queen James Version. That's kind of like the bizarro version of the King James Version, where they can write whatever they want. But you can't say that the King James preacher can't talk about he want, but the Queen James preacher can talk about whatever she wants or he wants in that matter or whatever the case may be. So, you know, when you talk about your First Amendment rights, you can do what you want to do. I should be able to do what I want to do also. And it's just kind of the crazy, crazy world that we live in. And as things get crazier, we've been talking about it for the last several weeks, how the United States government has come out and said we're not going to defeat ISIS, Al Qaeda, whatever the terrorist groups may be. With more weapons, we're going to defeat them with superior ideas. And of course, we all know that they are funding these radical terror groups. They are dropping grenades to ISIS. They are teaching Al Qaeda in various places. You have the very famous clips of Mrs. Clinton, regardless if you like her or not. Even she came out and admitted that we created the Mujahideen. I believe it was President Reagan who said something to the effect that the Mujahideen has as much integrity as our founding fathers. That's a paraphrase, but I think it's pretty close. And when we're out here funding our own enemies, just like Rob Dew, Darren McBreen, and Leanne McAdoo talked about last night, when they talked about the Suicide Squad, it's a new film that's coming out in 2016, how they send these guys, you know, these you know criminals or disreputable people who they can easily write off. It's kind of like Mission Possible. If these guys are captured or killed, they will disavow any knowledge of their activities and maybe even their existence. So the movie, they send these guys out to do the dirty work that they can't send the military proper to go and do. And that's the same thing you have with Al Qaeda, ISIS, all these groups. Yeah, they give, you know, dead shot guns. They give Harley Quinn a baseball bat. Go out there and kill the bad guy, but don't get caught because if you do, we're going to write you off. It's the same thing that's happening over in Afghanistan, places like that, Syria as well. And it's all coming down to the head. It's taking your tax dollars away. And we have the article, Afghan war cost American taxpayers $4 million per hour. And this is a study. And it's a new study that shows that America's war in Afghanistan is costing taxpayers roughly $4 million an hour, despite the Obama administration's drawdown of troops leaving only 10,000 soldiers in the country. But it's still costing you money. So you think about this. Every time they talk about some foreign land, even places that are much closer to home, places like Mexico, they don't talk about the gun violence in Mexico. They don't talk about El Chapo getting away and doing all these crazy things. Keep in mind, we gave money to Mexican drug cartels. I'm not saying those were necessarily connected to Chapo, but you have uh, these uh, groups being funded by the ATF with their purchase and giving them to Mexican drug cartels, these rifles that they want to give you a background check for if you live here in the States. You know, if I want to go buy an AK-47 or AR-15, they want to put me through the ringer. They want pretty much everything except a semen sample, but they just give this stuff over to the cartels, they airdrop the grenades to ISIS, and then they come back and tell me there's something wrong with me and my Second Amendment. No, it's something wrong with the people who continue to fund these people at $4 million a day over there in Afghanistan, not to mention all the things that are happening uh, that aren't financial. You have all these refugees, all these injured people, all these people suffering from depleted uranium, not just over there, but over here. Many people speculate, and I do believe their specula speculation is accurate, when they talk about Gulf War syndrome, people poisoned by the depleted uranium, people who come home sick, they have deformed children, not just over there, but over here. And it's even worse over there. And then you wonder why these people are mad at us. It becomes a chicken or the egg scenario. So maybe you did go over there for a justified reason, but now you have all these people with their children with horrific birth defects because of the depleted uranium. They're pissed off about that. And now the next time they see an American soldier, they want to take aim at him. And I'm not saying it, they justify need to be killing our American soldiers and women. I'm not saying that at all. But you have to think about things have blowback. There's an A and there's a B. There's a 
And there's an action and there's a reaction. You can't just do things and expect people, well, thank you for poisoning my children, soldier. Uh, I have a nice day. No, even Joe Biggs recognizes this. He said, I understand why these people are shooting back at me. I do the same thing if people came into my country. So that's my rant on that. But as we go out to break, we have a special report from Leanne McAdoo. She's gonna be telling you about Jade Helm and all the lies and media spin that surround that. Then coming up after the break, we'll have a special report from Joe Biggs going throwback from the vault talking even more about this. And of course, Paul Joseph Watson has a special report with Searing Girl talking about these Al-Qaeda beheading videos, these ISIS beheading videos. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. The Jade Helm military exercise kicked off today, and already we're seeing media outlets taking the angle of conspiracy nuts, thinking Texas is going to be invaded, martial law is imminent, people being rounded up into these underground Walmart tunnels, basically painting genuine concern as nothing more than crazy conspiracy theory. Uh, but one thing the media has failed to address altogether is the mastering the human domain angle of Jade Helm. This is something that we covered in depth months ago. I want to bring it back up to reiterate that this is what we need to be concerned with. The battlefield of the future is not going to be taking place between nation states per se. It is literally going to be a war for your mind. It's all about total information awareness, and that's what we're going to break down here today. So just to review, in military terminology, the human domain or human domain analytics refers to the global understanding of anything associated with people. Mastery of the human domain results from obtaining total information awareness on a mass scale, and we can break it down into four specific categories who you are what you do who you know and the context so I really had the privilege of uh, running a more of a multi ant innovation cell uh, the, the cells objectives were to use as much non-traditional data uh, in, from an Intel standpoint uh, do sense making of data so that not only your analysts but your machine learning, your, your algorithms you could build would, in, would ultimately get to a, a predictive analysis cell. It's very, very hard to do, especially if you don't have all the data. Basically, old data is good data, new data is good data, and all data is good. Now, with present day technology, meaning that pretty much anyone can upload a video onto the internet and reach the entire world in a second, uh, the government has not only hyper incentivize the collection of data but also merging all of the relevant agencies and so that's another big aspect of, of Jade Helm is that we have a lot of these agencies working together with local law enforcement. James Clapper who is the current director of national intelligence said in 2009 activity based surveillance built on a strong foundation of human dimension analysis will form the intellectual underpinning of how we perform intelligence in the future. A conference on mastering the human domain featured high-level military and intelligence officials openly discussing gathering publicly available data to create these detailed maps with layered information. And the recognition of the importance of the human domain and that uh, the sophisticated understanding of all those things you said, the tribal, history, language, culture, uh, it, 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 it's so significant. So Jade Helm is more than a simple military exercise. If you understand the technology that's involved, then you'll see that Jade Helm is more of an intelligence operation using geospatial intelligence mapping. And as information from low-level surveillance technologies such as stingrays and predictive policing programs are all getting siphoned up into NSA data centers, a detailed global map will continue to grow with near endless stats on all individuals. Jade Helm will not result in martial law. Rather, they are using this geospatial intelligence mapping to build a simulation, and that simulation will help them with predictive programming techniques, as well as it's gonna bring America one step closer to total domination by the surveillance state and the military industrial complex. You understand the question, you understand the needs, potential threats, and you're putting that in information together in a way that the, the sum is significantly larger, more valuable, more useful than the individual parts. My former manager, I am Bill Hicks. I'm being sarcastic. I'm actually a clone uh, between uh, Elvis Presley and John Wayne. 
So if, if, if you really want to get into conspiracy theories, I'm a reptoid clone of John Wayne uh, and Elvis, not of uh, Bill Hicks. OK, let's just get that clear. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, even Texas Monthly asked, am I Bill Hicks? And I mean, I might look like a third cousin or something. I, I just don't get it. But I know someone that produced some albums with him, kind of like I live in Austin, Texas. So therefore, I must be secretly working for the University of Texas. But I notice about fake conspiracy theories is they never go after real stuff. Like I've said I had family that worked, multiple family members that worked for the CIA. I've thrown stuff out like my family would do stuff like help East German defectors, and I don't know the full detail of that. Or, uh, you know, I had family that did black op missions in the Army. No one ever goes after that and says, see, he's CIA, he, he admitted it, because then it's not fun. You've got to make something up, because then it's like your new creation. It's like you, you made a new world of BS. I want to make something clear here. Cass Sunstein at the White House said six years ago they would discredit real media by creating outlandish theories to discredit questioning the system. And some can say I do that. I mean, I get wild sometimes, but I think that's real. People resonate with it, and it gets people thinking. You got to get folks out of their trance first. I'm Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, U.S. Army retired veteran of both Iraq and Afghanistan. Now I'm here today to dismantle the lies, propaganda, and just blatant BS put out by the mainstream media, the Pentagon, all these different sources are just clearly lying about this Operation Jade Helm 1-5. Now first off, I wanna talk about the Army Times. Now in the Army Times it says that Joe Biggs is cited as a veteran of Afghanistan and Iraq and said that exercises would prepare troops to throw citizens in FEMA camps. Um, I'm cited as a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, hello, you guys have written about me before. You can actually go Google my name with Army Times and pull up an article that you yourself did. Hello, you might want to go fact check yourself before you wreck yourself. You guys are supposed to have our backs. I'm a veteran. I actually have a purple heart. Do you know what that is? You obviously don't know what a veteran is. This is a purple heart. So now we're going to talk about the BizPack Review article. It says that, that we call this basically a secret document that proved to be bogus, but it hasn't slowed down the storm of conspiracies. Well, if you go back to March 23rd of last week, there's a video where I bring this Jade Helm 1-5 document to Alex. We sit down here at the news desk and we discuss what's going on. And in the video, you can clearly see that it says unclassified. Not once have we said secret document in any video. It's not secret. It's been hiding in plain sight for anyone to find, except most people don't know what to look for. And if they did see something like that, they wouldn't know what they were looking at. We get sent by one of our sources, I'll leave it at that, that, hey, this is hidden behind a firewall, but it's unclassified. They're supposed to be releasing this. A little bird just put it on scripts, the big document site. So that's a trick. When something's supposed to be declassified, they'll still hide it. So now for four or five days, they've had the different publications, Stars and Stripes, Military.com, and others going, we don't know if the document's real, but these conspiracy theorists, uh, uh, you know, claim that we want to take over Texas and Utah this this summer and martial law. We're not going to have martial law this summer. You notice how they don't deny the operation, though, whatsoever? They just keep trying to, you know, move the attention away from the fact that that's going on and just keep throwing out the conspiracy term and keep attacking us. So it takes people's attention off of the fact that they're that there is a mission going to happen, just like it says in the documents, they're not denying it. And then you got contacted by one of your f friends that you served with yeah. saying, shut up, it's a PSYOP, get you none of your business. Yeah. So now we're going to take a look at Fox News. And in their article, it says Pentagon and local law enforcement are trying to knock down the rumors and let everyone know that the feds have no plan to take over Texas. Well, last night on the uh, Kelly file, Megyn Kelly was talking to a reporter out of L.A., Chase Gallagher. While the military says it's just training soldiers for the realities of war, critics say the Army is preparing for modern-day martial law. Trace Gallagher live in our West Coast newsroom with the story. Trace? And they joke back and forth and banter. They would not once mention the fact that Alex Jones or myself or InfoWars broke this story, brought to the attention of the American people. All they did was just call us some 
conspiracy group out of Austin, Texas, or something like that. This is out of control. They are blatantly lying, saying that we said it was a secret document when we never said that whatsoever. Well, that hostile characterization didn't sit well with a far-right radio host in Austin who told his listeners that he had access to the secret document that details a federal takeover in Texas. A libertarian website also picked up on the plan, and before you know it, rallies were being held against the event. But apparently the so-called secret document was published weeks ago in several local newspapers, letting the public know the training was in the works. Still, the Pentagon and local law enforcement are trying to knock down the rumors, trying to let everyone know that the feds have no plans to grab the Lone Star State. Apparently this kind of stuff just doesn't play very well in Texas. Now, they refuse to link to our videos. Last night, Alex Jones actually did a video which outlines with proof what is happening? The plan to condition the American public into accepting this military presence on the streets. Now we're going to look at an article from the Dallas Morning News that says the U.S. Army Special Operations Command has an upcoming training exercise so covert there was a press release about it two days ago. Well, first of all, this goes back to the whole thing saying that we said it was secret. We never said it was secret. We showed you the document where it says unclassified. This is where it actually gets interesting. Now, it says, despite assurances that the training is to prepare troops for overseas missions, Army documents in the past have made clear that plans for martial law are in place for within the continental United States. Now, a leaked 2012 U.S. Army military police training manual entitled Civil Disturbance Operations describes how soldiers would be ordered to confiscate firearms and kill American dissidents. The manual also revealed that prisoners would be detained in temporary internment camps and re-educated to gain a new appreciation of U.S. policies in accordance with, now this is the key part, the U.S. Army FM field manual, in case you don't know what FM is, 3 dash one nine point four zero internment resettlement operations. Hello, these are the documents that the military is putting out. We link to this kind of information at InfoWars. We don't just make this stuff up. This is what we do. We don't use teleprompters. We actually go out there and do research about what it is that we talk about. Now, it goes on to say that Jade Helm has also drawn comparisons to a 2012 scenario outlined by retired Army Colonel Kevin Benson, in which the U.S. military is used to crush an insurgent rebellion overseen by Tea Party militia members who are going to take over a city of Darlington in South Carolina. The exercise is known as Jade Helm 15, and conspiracy theorists believe it is targeting the southwest region of the United States, particularly the state of Texas. The military is denying the conspiracy, and a spokesman for the military said, this exercise is routine training to maintain a high level of readiness for Army Special Operations Forces, because they must be ready to support potential missions anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. Army Lieutenant Colonel Mark Lastoria a SOCOM spokesperson says the notion was proposed by a few individuals who are unfamiliar with how and why SOCOM conducts training. Uh, a few individuals who are unfamiliar. In case you forgot, I'm Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, U.S. Army retired. I'm very familiar with these documents. The reason that we broke this is because I saw the underlying meaning behind it. So don't tell me or question my service. I didn't sit there and bleed for my country and watch my friends die so you can tell me that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Now we're going to go on to the next article by the Houston Chronicle, and it says plans for a 17-city Army Special Operations exercise in Texas stirred up some ultra-right-wing fears of a government takeover in the Lone Star State. But local law enforcement says they've been long aware of this drill. They've only been talking to people within Texas since the beginning of March. So I wouldn't say this is a long-time known operation that you guys have had planned. So we'll go ahead and go past that. Now, it says training exercise Jade Helm is going to assist our special operations soldiers in refining the skills needed against an ever-changing foreign threat. Well, I don't know if you guys remember when David Knight and I went to AP Hill in Virginia and showed you the training facility that has a church, a mosque, a soccer field, a subway station. Like we've always said, in the military, you train how you fight, and you train in an environment similar to the theater of operations that you will go to in combat. So why are these places popping up all over our country? Uh, a foreign threat, it looks more domestic to me. Now it says, among the plan exercises, soldiers will try to operate undetected amongst civilian populations in some towns and cities where residents will be advised to report any suspicious activity. Well, guys, guess what? I accept your challenge. 
I'll be out there in some of those cities in Camo myself trying to find you guys, call you out, call local law enforcement because I'm going to be a spotter. You guys remember when you went to sniper school, when the spotter sat up there and you guys shot targets and he tried to find you? That's what we're going to do. I'm also going to encourage a lot of my InfoWars uh, listeners out there to go out to these different cities as well and see if you can spot these guys. And let's call in on them. Let's see how good these guys are. Because we don't need a whole bunch of special operations commandos running around dressed in civilian attire, operating civilian vehicles, and also a bunch of guys in ghillie suits moving around through the woods doing God knows what. So, so far, I've covered all the mainstream media lies. Now what I want you to do, I want you to go to Infowars.com. I want you to tell your friends to go there right now and go to the article Beyond Denial, Preparations for Martial Law in America, where Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones lay out all the information over the past few years, where it clearly states that the government is ramping up to do these type of missions. Now, Jade Helm 1-5 is something that's probably been in the works for a long time. Because all this information that you can find in this article is very informative. It'll help give you a background about what this mission really is and what it is that the government's trying to do. Now, finally, I want to call out all you Pentagon propaganda pushing MSM sites out there. The reason why you guys are afraid to ever link to our information and call us by name is because you know the American people will find out the truth. You guys are all working for the military industrial complex. You guys are all vetted in the military, and you guys get paid by these guys to push their BS. I'm an American citizen, I'm a soldier, I'm pissed off, and after this video, a lot of American citizens are gonna be pissed off too. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com signing off. So over the weekend, as you know, we had this bizarre release of a video by the pro-Russian hacktivist group Cyber Burkut, which appeared to show a fake ISIS beheading being filmed in a studio with a green screen behind it, they had the scenery out to resemble a desert, they had professional cameras, the lighting rig. A lot of speculation surrounding this video. Now John McCain's officially responded to it, which we'll get onto. Uh, Syrian girl, who do you think is behind this video? That's the big question that everybody's asking. Well, we know that Cyberbird could release the video, and um, they are a, as you said, Ukrainian hacking group, but they are pro-Russian. Um, and they have a reason, of course, to hate John McCain, just as Syrians do, um, because of his support for terrorism in Syria. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fact that John McCain has been photographed and supported terrorists in Syria. That's not something that can be denied. And whether or not this videotape came from his so supposed Telephone, you know, that can't be verified because Cyberbird could hasn't released any evidence that they actually hacked his laptop or his aide's laptop. Um, and usually, like uh, a hacking group, for example, like the Syrian Electronic Army, would release some evidence that the hack is legitimate, either by showing a desktop of the controlled computer or by dumping a lot of data along with the leak. Right, um, they'll, they'll normally do a data dump, which we've seen in the past. Of course, as you mentioned, the claim was that, that it was an assistant to John McCain that they hacked his phone or electronic device during a trip last month to Ukraine, and that's how they obtained this video, which, if that, if that claim is true, brings the question, why would McCain's aide have a video obviously revealing these ISIS beheadings to be staged why would they even film it from way back showing the video cameras showing that it was staged in the first place? It makes little sense, right? Well, it, it does that make little sense why his aide would have it. And it does, you know, it, you know, it suggests that they want to pin McCain as well onto it, even though they don't really need to because it's widely known now that he supports terrorists. But well, that's, that's what he's denying today. He's, he's claiming that the picture of him with, with the Syrian rebels uh, from a few years ago was doctored. There's been speculation about that. But there's no speculation about the fact that he was pictured with Abdel Hakim Belhaj, who you remember was the leader of the LIFG, killed U.S. troops in Iraq, um, then was supported by NATO, by the U.S. during the, the overthrow of Gaddafi, and is now leading ISIS forces in Libya. We've got a photo of John McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham presenting him with an award 
So there can be no denial there that John McCain has indeed met with ISIS terrorists. Well, you know, and I think there's multiple photos here that we're talking about. There's definitely that photo from the Libyans. Now, there's two photos of him uh, in Syria. One of them is doctored. The other one is definitely real. And I don't think he's denied that one. That one was the one where he met with people who had kidnapped some Iranian pilgrims um, in Syria. And, you know, the FSA, as we know, are always allied and fighting alongside Al-Qaeda, if not ISIS, and many times they defect each way. But just because um, perhaps, you know, Cyberbird could made up the fact that they t- took it from McCain's aides or tried to implicate McCain, doesn't mean that perhaps that video didn't fall into their hands through other sources. And, you know, even if that, uh, the video itself, you know, it's, it's very well made and the, um, Certainly, the man who is supposed to be jihadi John in the video matches, you know, his standing position and his height, and you know, it, it it looks very legitimate. But regardless of whether or not it's real, um, many experts have said that the ISIS videos that have been released are very likely to be staged. Like these are normal experts that are apolitical, are video experts that are saying. It's very likely that they are staged and a green screen is used. Which is and, you know, which is odd because we know that ISIS is massacring and beheading people across the Middle East, Muslims and Christians. So given the fact that a lot of these experts have said that these videos could be staged, we had the example with the Japanese prisoners where the lighting was completely off. People came out and said that was staged. We had a group working with the Metropolitan Police in London which came out and said the same thing about a different video. So... Given the fact we know ISIS is killing people, that's not in doubt, and they want to create this shock and awe campaign to get more recruits from across the world, why would they or anyone else need to stage these videos at all? It's very interesting because there's so many ISIS beheading videos out there, but none of them have looked like the ones where foreigners were killed. It's only these times where uh, either Americans or Brits or Japanese or Jordanian pilots were killed, where all the stage lighting and, and everything that comes out. When Syrians or Iraqis are killed, you know, there's plenty of videos there, but none of them have this staged look to them. Yeah, because in the ones where the American journalists were beheaded, these videos, in every one that I saw, you don't actually see the beheading. You see him beginning to cut the throat, which is what's depicted in this this fake ISIS video that we're talking about. Of course, with the examples you're talking about, most recently Palmyra, where they got the, the children, the teenagers, to shoot the Syrian soldiers, and other examples, you see the full, brutal, gory beheadings. In the cases of the American journalists and other Westerners that are captured, you don't see the actual video, the actual beheadings on video. You see their decapitated corpses after, but not the beheadings. So again, that's why people are suspicious about this. That's why there's a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding it. And it's it's not just the conspiracy theorists that are saying it's staged. It's also experts that are saying it's staged that are you know not even involved in politics at all. Because uh, it's it's very likely that those videos were filmed. And, you know, they, and the, the photos of the beheadings were, were then attached later to the video. So no one was actually beheaded on film, as you said. And, and, you know, it's very unlikely that after that video happened that the beheading occurred. You know, there's a reason why they just cut off just before any gore was seen. And, and this is a group that thrives on, you know, promoting its brutality. So it's very confusing as to why they would do that. And also I wanted to ask you about these polls that have come out in recent weeks. In France, for example, there was a poll which showed that 16% of the French population were sympathetic towards ISIS. In the UK, we had a similar poll where 1 in 10 were sympathetic towards ISIS. Of course, they've got this huge social media campaign, 90,000 tweets a day. It's, It's becoming a sort of a rock star status that losers and dropouts can assume to affiliate themselves with ISIS. But why do you think that ISIS is drawing so much support, if not, you know, directly by militants going over and joining them, which is happening, but not in such great numbers? Why are they 
garnering such support on the internet and why are these polls showing such support for them in western countries i think it's definitely the mainstream media that is behind the promotion of isis uh not al jazeera is doing it for the uh middle eastern crowd and the rest bbc cnn are doing it for the western crowd and even though uh, isis is portrayed in a evil evil light they're also shown as strong and impenetrable and they're taking things over here and they're taking things over there and wow you know that is giving them far more of a boost than anything else that's why they're getting popular because the uh, the dropouts and the failures of society are who want would like to get some power in their lives are looking at this group and they're believing that it to be invincible and they'd like to you know carve out their own little kingdom in somebody else's country which is Syria a friend of mine um who had gone to Syria recently uh she's actually Australian of Syrian descent and uh, someone asked her do you have a terrorist problem in Australia and she said no not really and the Syrian lady told her well of course you've sent them all over here so a lot of these ISIS people are coming from around the world um and attacking Syria but of course you know Syria gets uh the the notion of of Syria being ISIS territory is what's portrayed in the world we're talking uh, before the break uh during the break rather about what's going on with Monsanto. There was an article a couple of days ago on uh, Infowars.com. Which of your foods are sprayed with Roundup just three days before harvest? Uh, an amazing, it's pretty much amazing. When you look at this, Anthony, it's pretty much everything that is a staple food. Wheat, corn, <laughs> pretty much everything is on that list. And at the same time, we now have Monsanto pushing back against the findings from the World Health Organization uh, that came out and said, yeah, we think glyphosate, which is Roundup, uh, we think that it is carcinogenic, carcinogenic and uh, now Monsanto is hiring a research firm to uh, give them the results that they want. Right, and they also bought the bee research firm after it was found out that their herbicides were killing the bees. Yeah. Right, so it's it's pretty easy to see how they work. Well, that's global warming. There was just an article about that the other day. It's forget the the pesticides. It's now global warming that's going. Right, on. right. Of course, <laughs> even though there's studies over and over again. Yeah. And this this segment, I'd like to cover a few things. I'd like to cover how we actually could get a new GMO regulation plan in place, and the White House is saying they might do it. The GMO pigs that be, could be coming to your dinner table. Mm. How living in nature can boost your income up to $20,000, according to this study, and make you feel seven years younger. We could talk about the Gardasil vaccine and a bunch of different stuff. But first, before I segue into Dr. Group and we start taking your calls and all that, I want to talk about a piece that's really important, and that's one that a lot of people missed, and that's called Activism Works White House Announces New GMO Regulation Plan. I wrote this a few days ago. And what's happened now is the White House has announced in a memorandum that we they say, we understand people want GMO labeling. We promise we're actually going to do something about it. Now, of course, I don't necessarily believe them, but this is good news because it shows that they're actually being forced to answer to us. Mm -hmm. And they're being forced to say, this is what they, they, they say in this memorandum, that so many people, millions of millions and millions of citizens have voiced concern about it that they're looking into an independent third party group to verify the scientific integrity and safety of GMOs and look into GMO labeling plans nationwide. Oh, that'd be great. And you, but you look at the flip side of that and there's that Monsanto Protection Act that's been reintroduced by Mike Pompeo mm -hmm. and that would ban GMO labeling in the United States. And we're gonna talk about that too. And what of course, that you've also be. got the treaties, the Transatlantic Trans-Pacific Partnership Treaties, which could make this moot. You know, it could just take this away with one stroke. So they could come out and say, yeah, you know, we did this for you guys. We heard you. We enacted this. But now we've got the treaty right. that takes it away. And the bottom so have line to be is vigilant everywhere. Yeah, you can't rely on the government. And that's why, Dr. Group, I want to segue into some of the things we can do for ourselves and also take everybody's calls because at the end of the day, you cannot rely on the government to protect you. No, I mean, my solution for that is just don't purchase anything that has the toxic compounds in it and continue the activism and continue to fight against the GMOs. You know, that is good that the government is announcing that. You know, Obama came out and said that one of the things if he was elected is he was going to require GMO labeling. And you know, with March Against Monsanto, the Monsanto video revolt, we've done a lot of good. Also, I mean, now they have non-GMO verified. 
But like you said, I mean, who knows? There's a there's a big fight going on right now between the government, the pharmaceutical companies, the vaccine issues, the GMO issues. My solution is just going back to nature, really, and and looking and educating people and determining. Let me know. I mean, is this food toxic? I'm about to feed to my child, or I'm about to put in my mouth. I mean, it really goes back to simplicity and the basics and things, and just understanding more about your body and understanding about food and avoiding those things. I mean, now people are not buying as much chemicals. People are not, they're switching over to natural things. And as you can see with the big companies, the chemical companies, they're all racing to come out with organic products and natural products right now because of the demand out there from the general consumer. So in one area, we're making a lot of progress and then in the other area, we're getting a lot of opposition, but I don't think the opposition is to the point where it's actually taking over the consumer. Because when it what it boils down to, this. yeah, the they consumer. know people. There's no question that people. Even McDonald's is out there saying we're going to make our stuff healthier. We're going to get rid of GMOs and everything. But in most cases, it's just a head fake. You're talking about non-GMO verified. I mean, that doesn't mean that they can't put pesticides on it. It just means that the pesticides wouldn't be GMO pesticides. Right. So it's a bit of a head yeah. fake from the grocery industry, just and like we see that coming from, from uh, McDonald's. And now this bill here might be just a head fake from the political industry, okay? So we have to watch out for our own food. Yeah, there are a lot of head fakes out there. Just look at the BPA baby bottle head fake. They made everybody focus on baby bottles, yet they're still lining every single can and milk carton and everything else with yeah. BPA. So there, there is a lot of truth to that. The and good news is, though, that organic is booming. And Monsanto lost a hundred plus million dollars in the fourth quarter last year. Monsanto's, I mean, at McDonald's, yeah, I mix them up. They're basically the same thing. McDonald's is closing 700 stores in the United States, and they're losing so much money every month, they've stopped reporting on it. <laughs> okay, and it just goes to show the opposition against GMOs is real. The only people standing up for GMOs are the ones that are basically being paid off on it. Like Hillary Clinton says that Monsanto's GMOs are great, and obviously she's going to support them. And it goes back to not trusting things like the White House memorandum saying that they're going to look into a new GMO regulation plan. But it is a powerful message. And I, we do have the clip ready, I believe, where Obama promised in 2007 that he was going to label GMOs. Just so everyone's clear. This is what's going on. These are the lies that get people elected because they know oh, yeah. the public is for this. So maybe we could play that clip. He's going to be transparent too. <laughs> Here's what I'll do as president. I'll immediately implement country of origin labeling because Americans should know where their food comes from. We'll let folks know whether their food has been genetically modified because Americans should know what they're buying. We'll let folks know whether their food has been genetically modified because Americans should know what they're buying. We agree. Now is the time to label genetically modified foods because Americans have a right to know what they're buying. And of course, he didn't keep that promise. You notice he says, immediately, we'll enact GMO labeling. And everyone's like, yeah, let's do it. Yay, we love you. Wait a minute. It's 2015. That was in 2007, <laughs> right? I'm still waiting for him to be honest and transparent. Yeah, where, where is it? And there's been a letter written by just labelit.org. I think we have it over here somewhere. It basically just says, Obama, you promised to label GMOs in 2007. Everyone's seen the video. We know you said it. Where is it? Mm -hmm. And then he says... Oh well, you know the White House. We put out this memorandum, and it's 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 some. We're going to work on this. No, no, no. We weren't going to work on it in 2007. We were going to do it. Mm -hmm. That just shows, though, the manipulation. They know what people want. Ninety plus percent want labeling. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I mean, and, and not only the GMO issue, but like you said, the glyphosate, the glyphosate, the atrazine. I mean, all that stuff, the endocrine disrupting chemicals that are flowing off into the water supply, and that's why. You know, the earth is sick. I mean, you look around and you see all the people that are sick out there, but the earth is also sick. Trees are dying. We're losing 200 species every single day. We have uh, the air quality is contaminated, the water, the food, everything. So, but the, the good news is there's solutions to that. I mean, you can clean the air quality in your home so you can breathe clean air. You can clean up the food so you can eat clean food. You can clean up and drink clean water. You can detoxify your body on a regular basis. Yeah. So, you know, that's the whole purpose. You have to understand how to combat the system and how look and understand what they're doing. And then at the same time, utilize technologies uh, in your own life and your own family's life to make sure that you're avoiding all that.